Mata Mayara, thank you very much for being here. Um, I've admired your uh, journey as dancers uh, um, for a, a long time. And so do you want to give us a little bit of uh, context about how you guys met each other and whether it was uh, on the stage at the, uh, in the Royal Ballet or before? Yes. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for having us. I'm um, yeah. really pleased to be here. Um, we go back quite a long way, don't we? We go back to when we first met, I suppose, in the Royal Ballet School, where we both trained. I was there for eight years, Mayara only for one. Yeah, I just joined from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was a bit of a different process, I guess, for us. But um, then um, we kind of cross paths, I, I guess, again, uh, later in the Royal Ballet Company, yeah. um, where we were dancing together, you know, once or twice. Um, but actually, it hasn't been until recently and uh, in lockdown and stuff that we've kind of set up a bit more of a, a solid partnership, I yeah. would say. Um, we got together as a, as a couple, um, maybe a couple, couple of years before the lockdown and things. But since then, um, you know, we've kind of got created together. We've started to explore some new avenues together. And, and also it's been advantageous just because of um, mixing within bubbles and stuff. So the company are actually casting us together as well, which is exciting. Yeah, it's been amazing really to have a great partner to carry you along. <laughs> As a dancer, of course, uh, uh, more than as um, any other performer of, uh, of, uh, of an instrument, you have uh, uh, a very special instrument, which is uh, your body, uh, uh, to deal with. And this, of course, uh, uh, results in uh, uh, you know, a, a different set of challenges in, in managing this instrument and, and um, kind of, you know, coming on, on, on top of it and, uh, and dealing with it. And so how do you think this is a um, shaping also the art that comes out of movement? Uh, uh... Yeah, I think it's, it's a really, really profound kind of thing to think about, really. And I think, uh, you know, humans have danced and made music from uh, you know, throughout the throughout all of history, um, but whilst musical technology has evolved and allowed for different things, the kind of makeup of what makes a human is still more or less very similar, um, and and that's you know that's the that's the paint that's the medium that we're still working with all the, throughout all this time, um, and so much has changed, so much has evolved. Um, throughout that, um, throughout our kind of ways of thinking about and using it, but that kind of connection that we're allowed to establish and cultivate with ourselves and our own body um, is something that I've always found very, very inspiring and very... Um, Challenging as well, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah, it's quite... Because we do deal with the, our you know, own weaknesses and how far you can push your body every day mm -hmm. and how different it feels every day. It's not just waking up and you feel slightly different, but then you can get and play an instrument that it will be the same from the day before. Yeah. So it's dealing with that as well. Um, but it's, it's also very interesting because it's a new experience every time you get to move in, or in a different way or doing a different ballet, you get to, to find different things. And how does it affect the, the relationship that you um, develop with your body? Um, as in knowing that you're going to be uh, producing art yeah. out of your body, yeah. uh, not only out of your it hands. It's changed yeah. from when you're a student, isn't it? Because we're all trying totally. to just push at our max to turn as much and jump as much and all in the same level but as soon as you join the company and you have the you understand more or less the how far you can push your body and the the roles that you are trying to achieve and how much you can connect it with the character that you're playing i think it does um you evolve as a as a as a dancer but also as a you know your physicality and what you expect from your body mm -hmm. how far you can push yeah can change uh, can change so much i yeah. think it's a really it's like quite like you say as well like you know presenting yourself as the, as the art as the instrument mm -hmm. um 
it's quite a vulnerable space to be in um in some senses and and you know often we're we're on stage as as ourselves um you know especially in more contemporary works and that's perhaps also as well like what we were discussing like it is slightly more human and we're kind of almost going on the um and 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 allowed to kind of you know we're not putting up layers in front of it it's just about your your persona and your style of movement and in, and in uh, trusting yeah. um that 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 is that is that is the art that is the you know enough um for you to kind of embody but um also we have this fantastic opportunity to kind of sometimes play dress up and and be these <laughs> completely other characters and it's incredible um of course our bodies are still the art um but once you put a, a wig on and, and and a tutu for the girls and or a you know a tight fitting jacket and yeah. the your physicality changes immediately um the way you hold yourself changes even sometimes the way you find yourself if you're talking on stage which you shouldn't be doing too much of but um, <laughs> you might even kind of play into that um and it's a that is a real amazing opportunity for kind of escapism as well yeah. even though we're very much uh, you know still presenting ourselves <laughs> what what's difficult about specifically the more classical repertoire is is it can um feel or appear to be rigid in 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 the sense of what we're aiming for so certain ideas like I was speaking about the positions of ballet um you know like first second third fourth fifth like it it's it's you know it's kind of very straightforward but to execute the techniques that we're trying to do for example a male step of standing on in fifth position jumping turning twice and landing in fifth position like it's very apparent if that doesn't go perfectly well like you have to be straight as narrow and you have to land in these very tight yeah. positions yeah. um and there's no kind of room for maneuver around that so in in that sort of moment you know there's there's no amount of charm or honesty in your performance that can really make it better i would say um so there is definitely in those sort of roles a le- a certain level um of criteria that you almost have to match perhaps uh, we could uh, um articulate this looking at uh, what kind of uh, uh conflict uh as a dancer uh you live uh, uh in this you know constant uh, being uh, um swayed one way uh, or another you know towards the past or towards the future uh towards what your body is um or what the benchmark of a you know a specific physicality would require um yeah as a as a ballet dancer i've always wanted to um you know do the big classics but also have my interpretation put onto it which is great because the the royal opera house does the the royal ballet especially give us this opportunity to have our own interpretation and put into it if it though though the expectations are there uh, but also experience um different types of movement with the contemporary work as well so having a bit of i feel like as dancers we just want to do everything we want to grab from every corner and it is really difficult to be able to be great at everything but we do we do try our best and um yeah maybe for for me as a girl now that we're doing a lot of contemporary works and having been low on the floor using a lot of our legs maybe that's not a very good thing when you get to do a classical piece and you have to look you know lean and reach the lines and and work on point and work on point as well so that the difference of like um when you want to achieve all the and grab all the roles that you want to it's it's really hard for the body to to make the body used to dancing and it's often, or shaping it's it in a different way. It's that we have to change, isn't it? Yeah. We're often rehearsing two different very sort uh very sorts of balance. Yeah. Um, quite same quite same extreme time, for the body very, to you kind of really. al- almost want to have a period of adaptation within that mm. and, and often we're not allowed that no. luxury but no. I think something about my what, what, what my aunt was saying the the kind of desire to always grab any opportunity um as part of the nature of it being such a short career mm-hmm. um and wanting to kind of you know make the most out of these opportunities 
um, as, as well as exploring, um, you know, all these different dimensions and, and, and kind of being able to balance that is, is something that's very um, difficult, isn't mm. it, in fact? I think we're all, we're all the time trying to be spontaneous, to try and be um, instinctive and kind of uh, natural, at least, and, and free when we get on stage. Um, but in actual fact, we really need to also be disciplined every day to come in and yeah. um, practice our craft and work on all these uh, varied elements and have a kind of uh, game plan for the for the future and a, uh, a, a strong routine to stick to. So um, the, these two sides are kind of sometimes pulling us, um, which can sometimes feel like a real struggle. Um, but I think more recently I've tried to think of it as more of a kind of um, an interesting playoff between the two um, and where, wherever you kind of land within, within that space is part of what defines you as, a, as an artist. Um, yeah, and how much that carries into how we are as you know, people in our normal daily lives. Do you feel more like, do you feel more an artist or an athlete? Um, if it's possible to sort of uh, say, I don't know. Well, <laughs> we would try as much uh, as we can to feel as an artist, but it, it's really hard to um, detach from the physicality required yeah. from, from the art form we, we play. It's like it's going along with us and we will stop us at some point. Um, but I think that's what we've been building is uh, with the opportunities of play roles and experience different things. Um, we will stay and hopefully we'll, we'll lead us on once the body doesn't want to do it anymore. And there's always a different one because ballet as well. Um, we can do for yeah proper classical ballet, we can do for a certain amount of time, but it, it goes a bit like Matt was saying to the contemporary movement and that gives us, allows us a, to have a few more years of, of indulging and using our bodies later in a career that's yeah. what most dancers do so it's almost like you can grab onto that to carry on with the with the art form and yeah how did you how did you guys fall in love with ballet in the first place like did it happen uh um just you know randomly or did it happen specifically well, there were yeah. like family <laughs> no, elements not for me um so as you know, I come from Brazil and I had eight years of training back there before I went to a competition in Lausanne, um, Switzerland. And um, I won the scholarship to join the Royal Ballet School, which is a proper vocational school. We would call the, the school where I started dancing, like a recreational type of school, um, which I had a really good teacher who had worked in, um, in Europe uh, and went back there to coach me and said, oh, you could have a career abroad, so you should try it. So that's how I... I got to the Royal Ballet School. Um, when did you fall in love with it? Uh, but when did you fall in love with it? It's exactly. So back in Brazil, when I was um, very young, that was when um, it's. I did a lot of training, but also um, how the kids are mostly um, taught in Brazil is to go around and participate in competitions and almost like a bit too early for what the the Royal Ballet British School, the dance. British <laughs> dancers do. And they, were they, eight years they, old. eight years old. Yeah. You, they throw you on stage and yeah. just let you experience the 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 joy of being out there. And, and dancing is the, very relevant to Brazilian culture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's almost like giving you the chance to find yourself first before even like inputting the technique yeah. into yeah. it, which um, which was fascinating for me really to be able to have that contact and I. I had so much stage time at that time, such a young age, that I had so much reverse and do a lot of the work, hard work afterwards and Later parallel on, to yeah, it, yeah. Um, which was good for me because I was never really hard, really scared to be on stage. I, I really lost that <laughs> uh, that fear and I was just had to yeah work almost backwards into my technique, which was different from you, wasn't it? You had... Yeah, very different. Yeah, I think it's difficult for me to pick a definitive moment where dance kind of became, you know, my my be all and end all. Um, you know, I definitely had a very cultural background um, whilst I was growing up. My 
mother was teaching dance um, at an academic level for secondary school students and my dad was in, uh, working in drama. So it was very much part of the landscape, I suppose, um, the theatre in, in general. And I'd see performances um, and that would kind of be, you know, just something that I always latched on to. But I wouldn't say it necessarily, you know, seemed like the one, one and only thing. And then I started to go to some dance classes and and then just as 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 these things kind of started building up, I started to learn more about the context of of dance than the and I really bought into these kind of uh myths and legends, I would say almost of these kind of uh great figures of, of dance like, you know, whether it's Rudolf Nureyev and Nijinsky or Margaret Fontaine and all these kind of um icons. Um, and I, and I, came, I became quite obsessed with them and started watching videos and, and then I think I just kind of got hungry and delved deeper and deeper and, and, and by the time I was about, um, well, by the time I was 11, I auditioned for the Royal Ballet School and that was, you know, came with the, you know, I knew the fact that I needed to move from Liverpool to London, um, which was, you know, quite a big decision um, you know, for, for me and, and for my family. Um, but it was something already at that age, it had definitely become, it, was, it wasn't really a question. It was, it, yeah. I was going to do it. Um, yeah. And then there was no two ways about it. Yeah. So how, how do you think uh, in society nowadays, as opposed to other um, art forms, ballet uh, um, work uh, on the audiences? So, so what's this, uh, what's this uh, special uh, grip, what's the special pull? Uh... Yeah, well, I think what, that's one of the most beautiful things, I think, about the kind of format of the traditional ballet, is that, is that like you say, that interaction um, between these kind of often tends to be a kind of opulent core scene, very formal, in structure um, and, and, and stylistically, um, you know, it's arranged with these few, uh, few divertisements with, you know, a few kind of regional dances and all that sort of thing. And then we often go to this kind of second act or, or another scene, um, usually populated by female dancers on point and predominantly in white. And it kind of enters this kind of ethereal realm, yeah. mm -hmm. which I think in, in, in several ballets actually taps into this uh, spirit of kind of escapism in such a beautifully poetic way. And, and, and often for the girls, they're, I think, really lucky. Um, often they do work harder than the gentlemen in ballet, but they, they have these kind of um, opportunities and, and moments where, where, they, where they transcend being a physical human and they either become a spirit of a of a, a jilted lover, or or swans in configuration, or even the shades in Labiada. They're like almost like the whispers of smoke coming from an opium pipe. I mean, it can be so um, expressive. And, um, so men men tend to be more grounded to earth. Women so, tend to be so more. So usually in these scenes, they they probably be one, two men max, kind of um, within the scene. Mm -hmm. as, as, as the kind of protagonist perhaps, yeah. but observing, yeah. observing this. Um, and and I, I don't know, you know, how you, how you feel actually trying to embody that, that sort of thing, but, but that's, that's again, that's the kind of moment where like, I imagine like, you know, the pain of wearing point shoes becomes worth it because it's for a reason that they rise up above the ground, like they're no longer attached to it by gravity, they're no longer of this world. Um, and I think like that's something that a modern audience can really watch by and be like, wow, I've never seen anything quite like this, like the magic that, that's happening right now, the, the way that, you know, the girls can move on point, they, they do this, uh, a step called a bore, which is almost like to, to run, but it, it's it moves, these very, it moves, it very almost tiny glides. little steps, yeah. almost like a trill on the piano, yeah. but they would glide across the space. Okay. Um, in such a kind of incredibly stylistic but very kind of profound sort of real, realization of a, of a kind of um, 
poetic conceit, I suppose, in the, in the movement. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, like, for, for a modern audience, they still find this incredibly um, moving. But then on the flip side of this as well, we have, we have those contemporary ballets as well, which I really enjoy taking people to come and watch, um, who, who've, said, who've said to me, you know, I haven't seen much ballet. Um, and you take them to watch and they go, I thought you said I was coming to watch a ballet kind of thing. And, and mm -hmm. actually, the, what, we, what we do is, like, like we've said, a, a very broad sort of um, range of styles and movement and, and work. And, and often we're dealing with, um, you know, working on ballets about, uh, or inspired by the, the refugee crisis or... Um, you know, recently we created one based on Jacqueline Dupre's life and, um, you know, these are subjects that perhaps one might not expect, mm -hmm. um, but in actual fact, dance really can um, reveal, like you said, a world that, you, you know, one might not have expected um, that you could understand very well. But I think people should trust themselves more than they expect because we all interact with and understand movement inherently quite um, well and that's um, a language that we grow up understanding just as much as, as the way that we can vocalize things um, and verbalize things we we understand how the movement of someone's body is actually mm. informing um, informing their mood um, their emotion and, and you know what they're trying to say as well. As I walked out one evening, walking down Bristol Street, the crowds upon the pavement were fields of harvest wheat, and down by the brimming river I heard a lover sing. Under an arch of the railway, love has no ending. I'll love you, dear, I'll love you till China and Africa meet, and the river jumps over the mountain and the salmon sing in the street. I'll love you till the ocean is folded and hung up to dry, and the seven stars go squawking like geese about the sky. The so you've been working together on recently on some um, creative repertoire that uh, has, uh, in a way, uh, initiated some different uh, stream of work uh, as opposed to the uh, most uh, standard uh, um, uh, repertoire. You want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah. Um... So Matt is being always very creative in finding music and um, one day he's also very interested in um, the sort of uh, routine I have um, with my religion. I'm Catholic and I used to always go and I still do uh, whenever I've got the time, uh, go to the church every Sunday because that's the same thing that my family goes uh, does in Brazil. Uh, it's some, it's a, a connection that we still try to keep uh, even so far away from each other. It's, it's something that we, we know we wake up on Sundays and we think about each other and we're together and we find that. And with that and also with the music that you found from a, with the composers were just contemporary com composers, not kind of like yeah, kind modern. Of contemporary classical music. Yeah, you were like, why don't we just uh, do something and get to... Uh, well. I'm not sure I said. She actually, I she, she actually likes to commission most of my work. But then, but, but then she I hands it over. You. To, she hand, yeah, you need that. Well, you, you offered yourself, didn't you? And, and then I ran with it, I think. Yeah, anyone who went very far with her, clearly. Because, yeah. No, but I, I, um, I find it very inspiring. I think um, that connection that Maya was talking about um, across the globe with her family. Um, that she kind of continues to um, make and, and invest in and um, being raised in a kind of Church of England background as well. It's definitely something that I felt that I could tap into and, and relate to, although I'm not uh, practicing um, any faith at the minute. Um, I think, like, for, 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 me, for me, just just having the time throughout this kind of pandemic meant it was even more or felt even more necessary to to be actually expressing myself and and putting forward my own work but 
definitely in terms of having such a lovely um muse to 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 help explore with was was a um a big advantage and yeah definitely as a couple it's not necessarily the easiest way to mm. to work because i think you have a certain candor that you might not usually have um working with people you you can you can say things very honestly but also hurt them the, the easiest so um but yeah. I think at the same time, maybe you don't get the inspiration. But also, you don't have this kind of. Deep... We do manage to get the best out of each other, maybe not in the De most definitely. smooth way. But... No, definitely. <laughs> I think <laughs> I um, think I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't have necessarily taken a leap myself without my aura's um, belief in in me to in me actually to kind of execute um, these things. So that's been very valuable, I think, and exciting. Being yourself not a um, um, sort of creator of ballet normally, but of course having this experience uh, uh, recently gives you clearly a completely different view on how to go about uh, performing than something that you yourself have created. So how does uh, translate that back into your um, performing, you know, the more the more traditional repertoire once you go back to it uh, after the experience of being you know at the same time creator and performer it's hard isn't it we get quite um it's really hard. yeah it raises a lot of questions doesn't it yeah and also seeing things from different perspectives make you um appreciate um the the, the options the, the, the options that are there yeah. yeah exactly and i feel like almost perhaps you've opened the lid on something but you find out that once you look inside that that's revealed to other doorways that you can go through as well and these these kind of branch off so certainly with performance in general there's there's almost a moment of surrender um to, to of acceptance of, of, of what you're capable of and, mm -hmm. and, and only being able to produce one thing in that, in that moment perhaps mm -hmm. i think my R has always got this incredible um ability to yeah, I think we, we both get nervous and almost all performers, I think, you know, get nervous that, that it'd be a lie to say that, that they're not. Um, but Mayara always seems to kind of get to this bit, this moment where just before a show, you kind of just, you're just ready to deliver, aren't you? <laughs> No, yeah, uh, it's almost I almost enjoy too much the pressure that I put on myself up until that point. I do. I just wake up on that day of a show and I just, you know, create all that expectation of me and I build up that stress. But as soon as I'm there in the wings, just before stepping on stage, it's I just forget all the, all about it. And it's all about being as given as I can be and going on and out there and yeah. performing my heart out, yeah. So the role of, of, of a dancer entails, uh, seems to entail um, a lot of um, dichotomies coming out in, uh, um, across the board. So is this the essence of what uh, um, it is all about and where you actually get the, the energy and the adrenaline to master, you know, this uh, contrasting forces uh, that uh, all along seem to pull you one way or another? Yeah. I think this the two way pull is something that by um in its very nature it's stim it's stimulating. Um as soon as you veer too close perhaps towards one way, you can um, you know, turn yourself around and, and start to maybe focus on, on other things and, and that interplay and balance is something that we're always testing, we're always pushing the boat out. Um, perhaps you know we move closer towards um, 
one with one with one role with one production um but then the next one demands a, a completely different set of challenges so we definitely thrive i think off that um lack of stability in some way <laughs> which is <laughs> which is kind of in some ways uh ironic but but it's it's also something that um it just 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 makes that makes the career makes the profession feel so unique yeah, yeah feel so unique and, and and engaging in all senses of the word and i think um our ability not only to um communicate with our body to others but also communicate with with our own body as um as something that's um you know something that is our instrument something that we're always investing time in um there's a great quote from ken robinson um who describes how some academics treat their body as just a mode of transportation for the head and i think that's a really for me a really striking point because i think any anyone that kind of takes that and absorbs that you could uh you could you can see how and why it's important to appreciate um and uh, you kind of take the time to 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 see the potential so guys thank you very much uh, for this lovely chat and i can't wait to you know be at the opera house again uh, to see you on stage <laughs> thank you so much thank you